Hello, everyone. We're going to uh, get started with our uh, webinar, Getting More Out of Your Parent Portal. And today we have Jesse Peavy with us from uh, Georgia Department of Education. He works with the SLDS department, and he's going to give us a presentation on how to um, get the most out of SLDS. Um, and you can access SLDS for your students through your Infinite Campus Parent Portal. And we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. So, Jesse, I'll let you get started. Thank you, Miss Tammy. I appreciate that. And thank you for everyone letting me join with you today. Uh, again, like she said, my name is Jesse Peavy. And basically what I did, I taught high school math um, for 10 years. Actually, back in the 80s, I sold computers before they were PCs. Yeah, I hear some of y'all laughing that he's pretty old then. Yep. Um, yeah, I've been around a while, but then I went back to get certified to teach math. I taught high school math for 10 years and in Blackley County, Cochran, Georgia. Yep, we get mixed up many times with Early County and, and Blakely, Georgia. But anyway, then they needed somebody in the mid-90s for technology, and I became the technology coordinator and um, student information coordinator and and then I was asked to be on the SLDS uh, governor's board and so I've watched this whole thing grow up and it was such a great idea that we could actually connect with the parents um, through your infinite campus so I think it's a, a, a very neat thing it's a single sign-on you get to one place you have access to many resources so that's kind of neat so we can partner together and just one thing to know again yes I, I, I do work for the Department of Education but I'm just Jesse, just to keep that in mind, that's just me. And I guess Ms. Tammy might cover this a little later, but I just wanted to show you that um, the, the S SLDS stands for Statewide Longitudinal Data System. We have inside of the uh, SLDS uh, 16 years of history now of student data for students who have been to a public school in Georgia. Now, if they go out of state, this does not track them, or if they go to a private school or home study, it does not track that. Uh, but if they've gone to a public school, we, we will have records of that. And here's a screenshot, I guess, if you're on campus, if you would actually go in there and click on log in. Now, you have to do this actually through the uh, web version, not the app app version. It has to be done through the web version. As far as I know, Miss Tammy, I don't know if you or anything different. I believe that's correct <laughs> that you have to sign in on a computer yeah. to your parent portal to access the SLDS portion of um, the parent portal. Yep. So, and you, once you do that, you'll come up and you'll see a screen, a little, um, and I hope I have the most updated version of this. Down at the bottom left, you'll see a little link that says SLDS portal. That's again, statewide longitude of data system. And then you click on that. Then you start heading into uh, what I'm about to show you next. Let's see. There's it. We're going to start landing in there. So with that said, that's where we're going to uh, I'll leave this PowerPoint presentation and actually go over to a live demonstration and show you that. And if, and if the Internet happens uh, not to work right, I can always come back. All right. So let me get a live demonstration for this. Now, I'm using a uh, demo database, and it's actually a real school's data, but they changed the, the name so that I can show you this information. Now, I'll go to the middle school. You don't have to do this. I'm just trying to get to the where we were at a while ago. I don't know. I can't remember one of my students. I'll go in as a parent. I'm just going to show you what it looks like from a parent's perspective. So after you click that link, an infinite campus I was just showing you. It's going to come up to this page here. Make sure I'm maximized. Get maximized. And basically you have tiles and you have tabs. You have tiles and tabs. And forgive me if I look over that way a little bit because that's where my second monitor and that's the one I'm sharing with you. So my camera's in front of me. And so we have the, the tiles and the tabs. They kind of go together. You have one that's called home. One is called performance. Notice you see performance down here and resources and testing and my career plan and the log out. Um, so with that said too, looking at this, if you have more than one student, we make it very easy for you to switch between students. Simply click this drop down list and then it will 
list your students up under, underneath there that you're tied to inside of Infinite Campus. So you don't have to log back out, log back in. It'll, your list of your students will be here. So keep that in mind. All right. So uh, and basically, we will explore some of the different tiles. And then if you have questions, you can type them in the chat. Ms. Tammy will be there to monitor that. And um, we'll try to answer those as we go. So let's go ahead and a little click on the one that says performance. Again, you can click the tab or the tile. So if I click on the tile, I see it spinning. And yes, I probably have about the same kind of internet as many of you do. We have to be patient down in the southern part of the state. Okay. Loading. There it comes up. So here's your here's your student's record that we're looking at. We're looking at the record. Uh, one thing, did you know that the student attendance is listed in here? And what this comes from is your your uh, child's teacher taking attendance every day in Infinite Campus or other student information system. <clears throat> and this is daily attendance. And then that information gets sent up to the Department of Education and we display it here. That's all we do. We just display it here. So again, if you even have a high school uh, student, this is a middle school student. We have pretty much the whole educational career in, inside of SLDS. Um, now, I see that this student had missed 14 days back in 2014. You see the seven, seven, like that, and so on and so on. So, um, so you get to see how many days that the school's reported that your student has been absent. Now, as you all know, and I'm sure Ms. Story has often said, I mean, getting students to school is very, very critical. And teachers have access to the same information, too. Uh, so they look at the student attendance closely. And here's a, just one little story that I would like to share with you that um, happened to me, and, and I will never forget it. I will never forget it. I was training in Macon, Georgia, and an um, elementary school teacher, she taught fourth grade, um, and she was looking at this child's attendance, and she started taking notes. So I went over there and asked Ms. Taylor what she was doing, and and she looked up to me, and then she, again, she was a fourth grade teacher. So what we're showing here is grades would be grades three and below. So this is last year's attendance. It's not the current attendance. This is last year's attendance. She looked up to me and she said, Jesse, this child has already missed over a year of school. Okay. What, what am I meaning by that? What she did, Miss Taylor what she did, she added up the numbers in these boxes, these columns here. And it was over 180 days. And, and she quickly knew this child was going to be behind because of that. So, you know, this is a good thing to look at because, you know, when if they miss a lot of days, I've, if they miss 45 days in one school year, that's actually a, almost a nine weeks there. So attendance is critical. And actually, uh, I mean, they recommend no more than like between five and 10 days a year. And again, I know this year and we're living in not normal times, unprecedented times. So it's always an exception with that. But um, look at the attendance and see what we have with that. Uh, next thing coming down, any questions before I move on with attendance, maybe? I don't see if you see any chats or not. But Okay. I do not. All right, next thing we come down is the assessments. Now, these are the Georgia Milestones assessments, and this is the Lexile score. This is the Lexile score. And what Lexile is, I don't know how familiar with, uh, everyone is with the Lexile, but it comes from the language arts portion of the milestones, and it's based on the reading comprehension. I told you all that I taught math, but and sometimes my reading was my lowest part of it. But sometimes with this, what this means too, I can possibly read some text, but I may not understand the text. And one example of that, I, if I just relate back to this, is um, growing up going to church. I'll just use that example. Uh, I'm reading the King James Version of the Bible. I don't normally talk in the King James Version of the Bible, uh, but I, I learned it. But sometimes 
I remember my teachers would ask me to read a passage of scripture and then I would um, read it, but I wouldn't understand it because some of those words were over my, I was past my reading comprehension. And if you know too, even uh, an example of that with parents, I don't, I'll let you know this, that there are websites out there that you change the Lexile levels um, for material, for the same uh, reading material. For instance, even the, the Bible app, I have it on my personal phone and I can change the different versions of that on the fly. So there are resources out there. And Miss Tammy, I don't know if you ever, have you used any of those or not? I have, no. I have not used that, but I didn't even realize that. So that is good information to know. Yeah. One of the big ones is called News ELA. News ELA. Newzella. Some people call it Newzella. Okay. If y'all, Albany or Albany. Okay. You know, I, I know I'm from your area. Okay. So I know how it is. News, News ELA or Newzella. People call it different things. But you can go and search, and you can change the Lexile versions there uh, on the fly. So that's good. Now, and so, um, and what happens as a parent, too, if I see how you can interpret the score, I look at this, say this is a 905 for last year. So that means this blue line is the middle 50%. So my child is just below the midpoint. It tells me the midpoint is actually 920 there. So this blue range is actually the grade line range they should be in. That blue is the they should be in. So uh, and it's again based on the milestone, the language arts portion. So you really like to be on up here above the this blue line and that would be the top 25% of that. So teachers have access to this. Parents have access to this. Um, and you have Lexile scores presented by the milestone, but also you have Lexile scores. I think you all use the MAP program, MWEA MAP program. And they give you Lexile scores too. So uh, we tried to work with teachers and tell the teachers that if, if you're teaching at a higher level of Lexile for some students, they're, they're simply not gonna understand what you're saying. So we work with teachers also and it, you as an parent can and can uh, look at this and kind of interpret it this and know what it means too. Um, and actually we have provided a link here <clears throat> for you that says additional information about Lexile. All you have to do is click on that. And here it comes up with a whole web page of resources for, for, for parents. Actually, this is not the same one for parents. Let's see, where does it say? Over here? here it is. There it is. This is, the, this is the Lexile for everybody. But over here to the right, I see that it's a parents' resources with that. So if I click on that, then I can go to the parent resources. And you can understand the, what the Lexile really means. And for the technical part of it, it means that I can comprehend 75% of the words in a given text. 75% of the words, if I can comprehend that, I should comprehend the whole, the whole text. And here's one other note to know that a range for your students should be from, if I have a Lexile score of 1,000, then I should be reading books or reading material 100 points less and 50 points higher. Let me see. Yeah, it's in here. There it is. Add 50 and then subtract 100. So if I had 1,000, I should be in the 900 to 1050, 1050 range. But that. So Lexiles is a, a good little measure for the reading comprehension part of it. And even in math, I use word problems. So if they cannot understand the comprehend the word problems, they're gonna have difficulty in math with that. All right, let's see. So Again, I got to that link and can find many other links. I could spend a lot of time with this, but I won't right now. By clicking in this little link, that says additional information about Lexile. I did notice this child actually had a retest in that spring of that year. Okay, the, the, the scores this year are actually in place. 
The milestone scores are in there in place right now. Uh, in my training site, they're not. Notice you're seeing a gap here, the 2020, then 2022. Uh, well, let's see. Actually, I, I think my labels are wrong. We had a gap. That was the gap year, wasn't it? That, that's what it was. So in not, the school year 1920, the 20, 19 to 20, 20, we didn't have any milestone scores because we didn't give them because of all the COVID. All right, so that's Lexile. It's a very interesting thing to talk about and, you know, could be room for discussion. Um, but that's what the state of Georgia subscribes to, is the measurement of Lexile, reading comprehension. Okay, now we're moving on down to the, actually the milestone scores. And we list them here. Um, you can see this, this child had a retest. Language arts, that's what that is. ELA is language arts. It was a retest, the only one they retook. And notice the different colors. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the different colors. You see the red is a beginning learner, the orange, uh, burn orange, or whatever is the developing learner. Green is proficient, and the fourth is distinguished. And so with each one of these, you can see the color real quick. The first number is the achievement level, which we know red is beginning, but it has a one, and that means that this uh, one is beginning like that. Um, hmm, how about this? This is interesting. This child in math is actually a proficient learner. You see that? At, at, wait a minute. Look at even the previous year for man. The child, the student here has actually been a, it, it, it's been the proficient in math for several years in a row. And language arts, they haven't been. So again, as parents, you have access to this. And the teachers, they have access to this information. And administrators. So I can quickly see <clears throat> this child is probably is much stronger in math than they are in language arts. And uh, needs additional support, possibly in the language arts area. And it mean, possibly could be getting that. But it's something that you can see as a child and uh, as, your, as a parent and look at your children's uh, record here. And, and what this is, a lot of people equate this, you know, <clears throat> going to a doctor and the doctor has your records in front of them. So this is basically what this is. It gives you that kind of information. One thing here is has, and I don't know what, Agents of um, students, we parents of students we have on here, but milestones are given in grades three through, I guess, tw 12, and they've eliminated some of them. And then um, now we do give some other assessments under like kindergarten and pre K. So we do have some kindergarten reports inside up here that you might not have seen before. I'll click on the kindergarten and see. Do we have one thing in the chat? I think a bubble up there. I don't know if it's a question or not. Don't have anything in the chat. Okay, it might have been you responding back. Or something. Okay. Oh, you put that. I see what you did. You put that, shared that link out. Thank you. I did. I okay. shared it to everybody. Yep. I just didn't see it. Okay, so I brought up this uh, kindergarten report. So if we have some parents who are looking at their students who are in first grade or second grade, you would have access to this information here. And this is about the only report inside of uh, this whole platform that shows non-academic results. We don't show any of the type of behavior inside of SLDS, but the GKS report tells you some things. Like the teacher observes this child pays attention. That means they are actually developing. And here's a little legend up here. Uh, demonstrates increasing task persistence, and you can see the various things. Works independently. So this is the non-academic side, but you look over here and look at the academic side, and really for G kid, they're broken down. The results are broken down very small, unlike some other ones. I've seen some of the motor skills that they actually assess. So that's a G-Kid report. Okay, here's one thing that if you're inside this platform, you want to make sure that you do is make sure you do not, well, you don't have, a, I don't have a back browser button here, but to go back one screen, 
you could click this back arrow or go all the way back to performance. I'll hit the back arrow. Should I give them a quiz at the end? I mean, hey, oh, I'll, I'll we can do that. that if you would like. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody's at the chat. I don't know who all's with that, but I wonder if anybody remembers. This is kind of a little break here. What do you call this 1980 style iconic icon, 1980 style? If anybody wants to put that in the chat, see if we can, we might throw out some candy for that one. I don't know. Is anybody responding or? Not yet. Not yet. Well, I know um, I, we were talking about uh, earlier, my children, they're 31 and 29, and they might not know what that is really for that. But that's called, back then, it's called the floppy disk, the floppy disk, or it's called the save button now. But you can take this. You can print it out if you'd like to. That's we do have do. a response. Somebody really? didn't know what that was. So, Wow. That's good. That is the friendly floppy disk. And you can send this out to Word, and I'll try it, I guess. And it just throws it into Word and puts it down in the bottom. And what you see is what you get. It comes up to it. And 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 uh, teachers have access to this too. Oh, oh, would that be powerful? What, what if you took this and took it to with the parent? If you had a conference with the teacher, what if you take this and and go? Uh, if you're having a, a parent console with the teacher, take this. You can print it out. Let me sl slide it over. Uh, come on. There it goes. And see, it's pretty much what you see of, we saw inside of SLDS. You see all this stuff from here. Like that. Isn't that kind of cool? That would be a, a very powerful tool, especially when you are going for a uh, meet the teacher at the beginning of the year and you can kind of um, have that in hand and talk with the teacher about um, what's going on uh, the previous year or even years um, and so that she knows you're aware and, and you're both on the same page beginning the school year. I think it would be very impressive, real impressive. Okay, so what we're, we're back on the, the, the what we call a student profile page, and we looked at the G kid. And uh, for certain grade levels, we, we won't talk about this, I don't think, too much, Miss Tammy, here. The growth model um, it's there, and I don't know how much more it's going to be there this year because we skipped last year. Uh, do y'all know that the map results are inside of the SLDS for early county? Yep, they are. And so it would show up under here called local assessments. So as a parent, I can look at the map and I'm a, I use terminology acronyms and I hope they understand what that is. Tammy, I don't know if you want to interject anything there or not. Um, with the map. Yeah. Um, I'm not familiar with the acronym. I mean, I hear map all the time, but um, I know what it stands for, but I mean, I, can I you tell us what it stands for? I had I had a vegetable alphabet soup for lunch here. <laughs> it stands for um, measure of academic progress. Yes, that's correct. I, now that you say it, it reminds me that that is what it stands for. <laughs> yeah. So what this we have inside of here map shows a predictor of how your child's going to do on the milestone. That's a predictor. So uh, what I'm showing you here. Now, that my dates are old, but that's okay, too. Um, so what this is saying, that the map, they took it in the fall. You know, we, we take the milestones in the spring. So this is saying your child would be a developing learner in mathematics next spring on the real milestone. That's just a predictor, of course. But, uh, but look, what else you can do? You see the hyperlink? That means you can drill into this. Let me show you this right here. If I click on this link here, it allows me to go in here and see how my child did on that individual map score. It's got some information across here. Um, and this is another terminology bit right here. Let's see. This right here. That is the Lexile score for this one math assessment. 
but we looked at a while ago for the milestones. This is actually the one assessment for the map, 805. And notice, where did they get 705? 100 below. And what's the maximum? 855, 50 or above. So you take that 805, subtract 100, you get that, add 50, you get that. Wait a minute. You know, you can tell how long your student took on that test. Test duration, 56 minutes. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've been a parent, I've been a teacher. And, we, you know, we're not against each other. We work together. But, I, yeah, I know, too, I've seen some students take even three or four minutes on these things. They don't take it seriously. And so here's a little thing you could possibly show to your um, students. You could bring this up and say, well, I'm sorry, well, you only took five minutes on this assessment. But, you know. That's a kind of a neat little thing to look at with that. So um, it's got a lot of other information. I mean, even when they started taking things, so just test data. You know, just you can look at all you want to. There's a lot of stuff across there. But but the one I want to point out was there's a, a new Lexile score. And then there's actually the test duration. Now, let me go back one screen. So hit this back arrow. I'm down in the map section of this student profile page and so say that's, that's the only thing we've looked at so far it's performance we just clicked on that and kind of worked our way down let me scroll back over a little bit more i think we're almost at the bottom actually there's the map data and we show it if they've been taking the map data for i don't know how many years uh, it'll have it there and this student was doing real good in math uh, but it says developing learning math, developing learner. So, and the map they take, um, usually they take, Miss Tammy, about the fall, the winter, and the spring. They take it three, three maybe four times a year is what they take it. Yeah, we, um, uh, it's yeah. for uh, progress monitoring. Uh, making sure students are on track or if they're um, needing assistance or additional interventions or anything like that. Yeah, a lot of school systems use it so across the Georgia. And, uh, and notice where that's located. This information is located at. Right here it says the word local assessment. Not everybody uses MAP, but, um, it, you know, it's there. So basically what we've done just today so far is I was on this page. I clicked on performance. And we just basically went down that page and found some interesting information. Now, it's one other thing I, my, my student did not have, and I'm just, I'll am just i flip back over quickly to the PowerPoint to show you this because you need to be aware of this. And I like those things. That I don't want to waste your time. Hopefully, I don't want to do that. I want to show you some interesting things. Um, all right. This is the PowerPoint. This is not the live one. So when you bring up a student profile page, it says something up here. It says downloadable reports. Do you know that you can actually access all the, the milestones reports and the individual reports from here? And I'm having a meeting next week, uh, next Tuesday, to see about putting a link for the IEPs for parents to have. Would that be nice to have that you could take, you could print out and if you have it for doctor's visits or... Um, you need it sometimes to get services for speech or, you know, physical therapy outside places, you know, that type of thing. Then it would be listed at the top of there. Now, I don't know if it'll happen, or not, but next Tuesday we're having a meeting for that. That would be um, an excellent resource. And an IEP is an individualized education plan that students with disabilities has. Is that that's the IEP you're talking about? That is the IEP, and I'm and I'm forgive me for all those EOGs, like I said, the IEP. But you're right, the individual educational plan for a special education students, student with disabilities. Yep. So, and you, I mean, as a parent, you have a right to have it anyway. So it would just be more convenient. You wouldn't have to call the school up to go see that. But I want to point out, and it would be up here when that one happens. And if it happens, again, it's just the beginning of that. Well, I'll preface with that since we're recording it. It would be in the header at the top. It would say downloadable reports. 
you can expand that and it will start showing this stuff up here. And I think I covered everything here so far I wanted to do. All right. Um, how much more time you want to go? I'm, I, I would definitely want you to cover resources if right. you can. All right, resources. So we're switching gears a little bit. So, and mine's not going to work exactly right. I don't think I hadn't checked this in a while. Resources. If I click on this key, what this contains is up to thirty to 40,000 different resources that have been aligned to all the standards in Georgia. So you can find these online resources with the click of the button. Now, I might have timed out. I say it's still spinning. I'd give it a second there. And um, let me go ahead and get into one. Normally, you'll have a key there. Uh, I picked a bad one. The yeah, me one second. Let me. Um, and what, and I'll kind of do two things at one time and move over there and show you something. But what this one is, it has a little key, and I want to show you that when I get it there. Let me see if the PowerPoint has it. Uh, no, I don't think it does. All right, give me one quick second. The training site sometimes is not exactly like our. Uh, the site that you see. I'm still getting there. Almost. Almost again. I'll choose one. I think this is critical and important with that. Let me click on this link and see. Hey, well, I'm trying to make sure I don't show a name before I move it over. That's what I'm trying to do. It's going to show a name, but I'm going to move it over just a little bit, I think. There we go. Okay, so I hid the name with this. This is actually where I live, Lucky County, a, a student that teaches. This is what yours would look like. This is what yours would look like. And I don't want to maximize it because I might show the name then. But so when you click on yours, you will have a key over here to the side. I want to make sure you see that key. You have a key. So uh, behind that key, this is a mathematics class. And behind that key will take me to resources based on that subject, based on the subject. So when I click on that, let me see if it, oh, this is the, this is the beauty part of it. Yep, it didn't show it. it now I'm safe to show you everything I think here. So it shows me this right here, this screen. This is where it, it takes me straight to this one uh, class. And it has a standard here for geometry. And not, watch it not be in the resources there. I'll choose another one then. All right, so this is here. So here are the standards. And all those letters and numbers means various things to the teachers. And you don't have to worry about that. But I have some resources straight here that I can go for these, this one standard. If I click on it, it's going to take me to an outside source. And it's coming up. Now, this is not a DOE website. This is actually a website where it talks about polynomials. But it has been vetted and approved through the DOE. Correct. What the Department of Education has hired some teacher to go and find these resources, and we put them in one big call it repository, just a, a bank of resources, and they made them available for people. That's what they did. So, but again, like you're saying, they're vetted. I mean, they're okay. They work, work and they're reliable. 
and they go back to the standards. So now you have some resources that you can take with your student at home and work with the multiplication of polynomials. And it has a whole nother website. This again, this is not DOE. This is what ck12.org with that. So just lots and lots of material. Now, can you could you find the same resource out there on the internet? Yes. However, you know, like Miss Tammy's saying, uh, people at DOE have gone through and made sure this resource is a uh, viable resource and it goes and, and basically hits the nail on the head for that one standard. With that. So, so this and, is a, can, I'm sorry, just no, go ahead. Um, so this is a, a great resource if you're, um, having a parent teacher conference or you're talking with your teacher and they're saying that your child is struggling in a specific area with a specific standard, as long as you know the standard, you can go here and find resources mm. to help your child in that area. That Correct? is right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, now how did I get there? I went to resources and my demo database doesn't do it. But when yours comes up, it, that little gold key and you clicked on the go key. And it takes you straight to this, this is what I'm showing you. But wait, sometimes I feel like I'm selling some kind of uh, infomercial, you know, but wait, there's more. This is ninth grade mathematics. So if you have a child who's in ninth grade uh, class, math class, but needs some eighth grade remedial work or seventh grade remedial work, how can I get back to that? How about that? Is that a fair question? Again, all I have to do is come back up here and people, you that gold key takes you to a specific standard. But now you can go back to any subject, to any grade level that you want to. But how did I get there? I clicked on this learn button and just pull it down and look. Yes, I can get back to that gold key, but I could come here and I could say, well, um, Jesse didn't get the... Uh, fraction standard for eighth grade. So I could come back here and go to eighth grade. And if the teacher will tell me the standard I could need to look at, I could come back to any one of these. Uh, square roots, there's one. And I click on this resource and it takes me outside of DOE, but it's a resource just for the square working with square roots. Can you go to a Google search for square roots? Yes, you can. But do y'all know that people pay to get at the top of a, a Google search? So you might spend hours finding a good resource. This way it goes straight to a viable resource. And so we can look at it and see. And each one's different. Each one's different. And one thing we have, the Georgia Virtual School, their curriculum is inside of here too. So you'll see some resources in there with that too. Now, I'm at this website. It's called unbounded.org. Um, and here's some lessons. Here's some of the standards here. But it's nothing to stop me now to be going looking at some other things on this one website. Yes, I have left SLDS, but I can still find more information inside of uh, on Unbound Ed. This is what uh, grade eight, module seven, topic A, lesson two. But at this point, though, when you start doing here, you're kind of on your own. But that's okay. You can look around and see. What else is under eighth grade? You know, you can back up a little bit and find something there. So, you know, it, so, and then we have other things in there. So once you get to a website, you might start exploring there and find some more resources. All right. How did I get there? Let me drag it over. Uh, and I'll... Uh, and I'll show you it one more time. See, my website does not have the go keys. My website does not have the go keys. What yours will have, now let me move his name. I might, yeah. All right. Yours are going to have the go key. And for whatever subject you're looking for, you're going to find that go key, key. You click on that, and like physical science, it will come up to the physical science resources. Now, I will warn you, this student has theater, arts, and fundamentals. 
you're not going to find probably many resources out there for that. It's, but you, for the, the two largest ones are math and language arts, science and social studies, and then you get the other thing. But that's kind of the hierarchy that it is. All right. So, but again, you're not limited. You can, you can kind of move around under here and look whatever you want to. Find whatever kind of resources. All right. What any, any more? Um, I think that has been um, a really good presentation, Jesse. Thank you very much. And there are other things in SLDS that you can go and look at, right? Uh, oh, yeah. And those user guides and stuff are um, also in there. There's videos that you oh, can yeah. look at. And we'll, I'll show you how to get at those in just a second. Um, Jesse, is there anything else that you wanted to add? It? We're, we're at about 42 minutes. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, and I, I guess you're going to share this right here. Is that what you're the, the link is yes yeah i'll share a link that they can go to to get there yeah. we have uh we have this website here it lists kind of like what we looked at today and each tile has a video and each tile has a user guide so we've broken it down pretty small if you want to learn about, more about resources we have a user guide a pdf version and we have a video that plays now, I will say this, Keenville, I haven't mentioned that. Do we have any first and second grade parents out there? Well, your students have access to this game-based assessment system called Keenville. And we haven't talked about my career plan. That, as it says here, for grades 6 through 12. And it's a program called U Science. If we have any middle schoolers to high schoolers, uh, parents, uh, that's a very good little uh, application they can take it's under my career plan but help to determine what kind of job or career they might like to pursue very very good it's kind of a you know, entertaining it's not a boring type um application they go through so um but under my career plan is the thing called use science but good stuff there yes lots of great resources in slds um for sure um so uh, if you want to or is there anything else you'd like to add, Jesse? Um, and you can share this. The only thing was, let me start my PowerPoint. I think I got my email address. You can put that in the chat. I'll put it in the chat, Kana. There we go. There I am. So you can put it in the chat. I'll put it in the chat. Other than that, I don't have anything to tell you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody else. And Maybe one day we'll get back down to Early County and do some in person. <laughs> yeah, meet all the, the different uh, people down that way. If you're coming through Cochran, you know, <laughs> you can look Jesse Peavy up. You might stop and ask a, a few people. Maybe they'll say something good about me, but we'll go um, out, out. We'll go out and eat at our, our local barbecue place. So y'all stop by. Feel free to uh, look me up. I'm sure they will. Um, I'm going to. Uh, share my screen to show you some uh links uh give me just one second um can y'all see my screen now yes please. okay great um so this is the parent portal page on the Early County School System website. So if you go to our homepage, which is early.k12.ga.us, I'm just going to go there to show you how to get here. Um, <clears throat> this is the homepage of our school system website. And you go to district, there's a drop down menu and there's this little triangle. And if you click it, it brings up the parent portal web uh, page of our website and on this page if you don't already have an account set up it has set up directions here um, and they're it, they're pretty extensive directions so you have to read through those and um, if you need any assistance with those 
you can email our help desk, which is helpdesk at early.k12.ga.us. And I can provide all that in, in, in the chat as well in just a minute. Um, it also has password reset directions here. It also has portal contact information update. So if your address or a phone number changes, this is where you, you can go in parent portal and update, update that information yourself. Um, so I wanted to make you all aware of that. And I had um, a question in the chat. What is our district ID? And I think you're asking for that on the, the app when you load it. Um, and it should be early if it's still asking for a district ID. Um, so I want to uh, give you the link to this website. Let me see here. I'll get that real quick and copy and paste it in here. Um, if you have specific issues with Parent Portal, if you have a problem with getting set up or password reset, you can email our help desk. And that is at, um, I'm going to put that address in the chat as well. So you have access to that. And they will help you get your parent portal up and running. So I just wanted to share that little bit of information. I also wanted to share that we do have a, a parent's corner page. And um, this is how you can get to it. Sorry, I know there's several clicks there. Um, it has a lot of information um, in there. You can go look around. Um, Here's an also another way you can get to that parent portal information right here. Also on the resources page, uh, we have lots of resources here, but here's some uh, resource for SLDS. And you can um, go here to get to the SLDS page um, on the G uh, Georgia Department of Ed website. And then also, uh, if you go here to this link, that will take you to that page that Jesse shared with us um, with the videos and the user guides. So you can see all of those resources right there. And that's the link if you want to get to them from the parents page. Not like Walmart, right? One stop shop. There you go. <laughs> Trying to make it. I know sometimes websites can be a little hard to navigate. So trying to let you know that where stuff is at and that it is kind of easy to get to. Um, so that's all I have. Jesse, anything else come to mind you'd like to share? I don't guess so. Okay. Uh, I will tell you that on the resource or on the um, homepage for parents corner, um, it has my phone number and my email address. And I encourage you, if you have any issues or anything I can help you with, to please call me or email me, and I'll be glad to get with you um, if you have any problems with SLDS or you want to just come by and let's roll through that together. I'll, I'll be glad to do that with you. All right. Well, Jesse, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us today, and you gave us lots of great information, and I sure appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank and you, y'all. We Thank will, God. yes, and we will uh, close out the webinar for now. And um, like I said, if you have any um, questions or anything, just let me know. You can feel free to call me or email me. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Stop recording. I'm fixing this. <laughs>